Hello, and welcome to Old Ways in New Jersey. I'm Angus Cress Gillespie, your host. Previously on Old Ways in New Jersey, we've talked with registered architect Elizabeth Reeves, who's an expert on the old buildings of Rutgers University. We've learned a lot about some of the oldest iconic buildings here. This afternoon, we want to continue with an examination of the Woodlawn Mansion on the Douglas campus. This mansion was built in 1830 by Colonel James Nelson. He was a member of the third generation of a prosperous old New Brunswick family. The tradition of hospitality, long associated with the Nelson family, is maintained in present-day Woodlawn, where students and scholars come together to exchange ideas. Now, the original house was nearly square with a hip roof. The house had two stories and a basement. But by 1850, a kitchen wing was added to the house. In 1868, eight bay window extensions were added. At the same time, a porch was created, and the hipped roof was replaced by a mansard roof. Extensive alterations were made in 1905 by the firm of McKim, Mead, and White, and the current appearance of the house contains several styles, including neoclassical, Second Empire, and Colonial Revival. This rich architectural heritage has gained Woodlawn a place on the National Register of Historic Places. So please join us as we take a tour of the historic Woodlawn Mansion. Uh, we're here at uh, Woodlawn, the estate of James Nelson, and um, I'm a student of architecture, but I must say I'm a little confused by this building. It's a, kind of a mishmash. Um, can you tell us a little bit? It sort of resembles Second Empire, and it sort of resembles uh, Colonial Revival. Wood Can you enlighten us as to what, what's what here? Yeah, Woodlawn is a very, very complex building because it was uh, begun actually in 1830. It had a second edition made in 1850, a third edition in 1868, and the final edition was made in 1905. So the styles kept changing. The styles kept changing. So the original building would have started out uh, 1830, probably as uh, somewhere in between a Federalist style with, with the tall columns and uh, Greek portico. Um, so between Federal and Greek Revival would have been period to 1830. Um, in 1850, they added the kitchen edition, which is still on the building today, much smaller scale. Uh, in 1850, um, Mrs. Nelson also added uh, eight bay windows. Two of them have been removed. Well, I guess the fact that they kept putting these additions on that helps to explain the asymmetry of the facade. That, that's exactly right. McKim, Mead and White played a role in, in, in this latter change. McKim, right? Mead and White did the final alterations to the building. Uh, McKim, Mead and White were the first firm in the United States who were professionally trained architects. Uh, Charles McKim actually went to the architecture school, uh, Ecole des Beaux-Arts in Paris, um, and was the first American architect to be formally trained. So I, I assume because of the hand of McKim, Mead and White, this, this building must be on the National Register. Yes, this building is definitely on the National Register. Um, a little bit about McKim, Mead and White. They did a good portion of the uh, Newport mansions up in Rhode Island. So you have a very top line architect working on this building. 
but their particular style was more of a Beaux-Arts style. So it was very heavily based in classicism. Um, Palladianism, we have this beautiful Palladian window in the staircase, and of course inside we have that fantastic staircase, which was a McKim Mead and White edition. So it's fair to say, it's to Rutgers' credit that the building has been so well taken care of. Oh yes, oh yes. And uh, the, Mr. N uh, Nelson, James Nelson, when he gave the property to the university, uh, restricted the deed to the property for the building's maintenance, um, for the care of all the interior appurtenances. The building was supposed to be, and, and I believe it is, painted every two years, uh, and the original furnishings and appurtenances had to remain in the building. James Nelson must have had some legal advice in drawing up this contract with Rutgers. Uh, he was trained as a lawyer. Uh, yeah. So that would that would be one of the reasons. So, so, so part of it is Rutgers altruism, and part of it is legal uh, restrictions. That's correct. Yeah. That's <laughs> correct. And and originally he gave the property to um, the New Jersey College for Women, um, basically on behalf of his wife who uh, was not educated but firmly believed in education of women. So it was given um, the to uh, what's now Douglas College, or Douglas Campus, excuse me, um, but it was given to Douglas uh, for use by its students um, as a classroom gathering space, which is how the building had been used the latter part so, of... So it's very much a Douglas landmark. It really is. Elizabeth, we're, we're here in the library of the Woodlawn Estate, a good place to begin with the family history. It's a little confusing because James Nelson, we're really talking about three different people. Uh, it's quite a complex family history. So can you take it from the top uh, with James Nelson number one? Okay, yeah, it, it, it's very confusing because the Nelson family was such a proponent uh, and supporter of Rutgers uh, and then eventually Cook and Douglas. Um, the original James Nelson was an immigrant from Ireland and um, he had an estate down on Burnett Street down by the river. He was a shipping and mercantile magnate, so that was where he made his money. Uh, eventually, he built a house uh, up on the Cook campus near the Passion Puddle, and he lived there for uh, really quite some time. So this was a prosperous family from the get-go. Very prosperous family, very uh, uh, highly regarded within the community. Um, James Nelson uh, I also read the Declaration of Independence here in New Brunswick down, uh, downtown. So he was a patriot. Uh, he served in the American Revolution, thus is called Colonel James Nelson. So he starts the whole thing. Okay, he's, he's the patriarch. He's the patriarch. James Nelson, uh, Colonel James Nelson, purchased this property from the Voorhees family uh, the property was originally Native American lands and it was purchased in the 1730s by descendants of the Nelson family. Those descendants were the Voorhees and this whole area was known as the Voorhees Farm. So that was how the property came into the Nelson family. James II uh, then uh, built this house here in 1830. Uh, after the uh, house over by Passion Puddle was removed to a different location. And uh, he started out with a square brick building, uh, two-story, that was 40 feet by 44 feet, and it essentially had four rooms on each floor, a circular staircase that went from the second floor down to the basement. Uh, so he began to establish this property. Uh, at that time, also, the, um, the Minnesink Trail went through uh, the front lawn of the property. 
So uh, it was a very active place, and of course, out the front lawn, there were no obstructions. So they built it with the front of the building, looking out over the Raritan River, and basically their shipping interests along uh, the I wharves. See. James III, who really modernized this building, uh, what we are in today is the version that the third James Nelson created uh, in 1906. Uh, he and his wife, uh, Mary Putnam Woodbury Nelson, uh, moved into this house upon the death of James Nelson III's mother. Added on about 16 feet to the house, greatly altered it from this uh, very Georgian kind of Victorian house into a Beaux Arts mansion, which we see today. Elizabeth, I noticed that the carpet's in unusually good shape. Is this original carpet? This is the original carpet that was uh, purchased, purchased by uh, Mary Putnam Woodbury Nelson for the, uh, for the mansion, for the uh, uh, additions to the mansion. It came from Europe. It's in incredibly good shape. Um, one of the things that we'll see as we go around Woodlawn Mansion is the fact that when uh, James Nelson III died, he left in his will that the furnishings and everything in the house was to remain intact. So although some things have moved around, nothing has really left the building. So each room is full of sort of a surprise. It's nice because the portraits that uh, appear in the histories are still here, yeah. and uh, um, every room will have a little bit of a surprise to it. Elizabeth, this is a portrait of Mary Putnam Woodbury Nelson. Uh, tell us a little bit about her. Mary Putnam Woodbury was an extraordinary woman. She was originally from Salem, Massachusetts, and uh, James Nelson, the, uh, the third one, <laughs> met, uh, met her on a trip to Europe and was completely bewitched by her beauty, by her charm, and by her character. And, and it has been written that Mary Putnam Woodbury was James Nelson's Salem witch. And I understand she was very active in uh, civic affairs in, in New Brunswick, to the library board, the welfare board, that sort of thing. Mary was very involved in civic activities. Um, she just was one of those people who had a sixth sense about organization, about operation, about managing. Um, she was one of the managers of the New Brunswick Free Public Library. Um, but her main uh, priority was actually uh, youth of the community and supporting um, uh, the development, moral and intellectual development of the community's youth. I was once told that um, she was largely uh, James Nelson's inspiration for the founding of Douglas College, that, that, that he felt that although she got a lot done in her lifetime, she could have done even more had she benefited from a formal education. That's exactly right. James Nelson adored his wife, Mary. And um, at one point, um, and I'll, I'll mention this quote because it's a beautiful quote, Upon her death, James Nelson said of his wife that she was the ablest person he knew, man or woman. That's quite a tribute. Uh, this portrait is of Catherine Bleeker Nelson. She was the fourth wife of James Nelson uh, II. Um, a beautiful woman in and of herself. Her family uh, came from New York City, from the Dutch community in New York City, and uh, owned the uh, property over on College Avenue, which is now part of the College Avenue campus of Rutgers. The portrait is interesting because of the date. Born in 1809, she has a very interesting uh, period uh, type of clothing on, a stunning portrait, and we're very lucky to have it. 
Elizabeth, this portrait appears to me to be done by a limner, uh, that is an itinerant uh, portrait painter without formal artistic training. Seems to me there's, there's a lot of giveaways here that this was not uh, done by an academically trained artist. Uh, very definitely so, Angus. And uh, the painting itself, as opposed to the portrait of Catherine Bleeker Nelson, uh, appears to be much, much older. And uh, although we don't have it identified, my theory would be that this is the wife of the first James Nelson. That seems plausible. Yeah. I, I believe so. There, there are several indications of the era that this was done. As you say, the, uh, the painting itself is very primitive, uh, very 18th century. Uh, the feather in the cap, the hairstyle, uh, most noticeably, however, is the style of the dress uh, with the low neckline. Certainly in the early colonial period of the United States, women dressed far more conservatively, uh, covering up almost every part of the body. However, in the early 18th century and mid-18th century, it was uh, much more prevalent to show a bit of the breast, uh, lace on the cuffs, uh, certainly a much more almost French feel to the piece. One of the features of the drawing room is this uh, wonderful Steinway piano. Uh, it was patented originally in 1859, although this particular one was manufactured in 1866, and we're very fortunate that it was recently uh, totally refurbished, as you can uh, readily see. Elizabeth, this appears to be a pastel of Mary Putnam Woodbury Nelson uh, as a mature woman. Yes, it's a very beautiful pastel of an older, uh, more mature Mary Putnam Woodbury Nelson. Uh, this particular pastel was completed in uh, 1900 which was about 14 years before her death. And that so would make her about 54 years about old. About 54 years old, yes. Elizabeth, we're here in the dining room of the uh, Woodlawn Estate, and uh, the fireplace here has lots of interest. Uh, tell us about the bust. Let's start with that. Okay, the bust is a bronze bust of James Nelson number three. Um, there seemed to be a lot of him around, but rightfully so. Yeah. And this appears to be an inscription in uh, Dutch. Yes, of course, the Nelson family uh, were Irish. Uh, the Voorhees family was very much Dutch, so there was a Dutch influence still in the family. Um, the inscription is something on the order of there's nothing better than friends and family around the hearth. And the I guess these are pediments on either side? Uh, um, they're uh, fluted pilasters, yeah. yes. It's, uh, it's a modified federal pattern okay. uh, to the fireplace. Uh, remember, 1850 is about the time of the Civil War, mm -hmm. when things and in, uh, interiors of houses were much darker mm -hmm. than uh, we tend to believe. Elizabeth, we're looking here at the uh, Dutch tiles, and it occurred to me that um, there's a pattern. They seem to alternate uh, between religious scenes and secular scenes, between biblical verses and cityscapes. Yes, very much so. Of course, this is uh, the dining room, and we're talking about a very religious period of time, the 1850s in the American culture. And uh, the uh, biblical tiles actually quote uh, chapter and verse. Uh, the cityscape tiles are actually uh, castles and sailboats and windmills and uh, there's a Dutch fort in here. There are different depictions of the old country. Uh, yeah. So, for example, here we have the story of the prodigal son from the Book of Luke, mm -hmm. alternating with a harbor scene, and then we have the story of the grapes and the pomegranates alternating with, uh, again, another harbor scene with a castle. Yes, that's correct. Uh, tell us more about the uh, china cabinet here. 
Uh, yes, across from the uh, hearth, of course, is a beautiful piece of Sheridan furniture uh, housing the china cabinet. Again, this would have been period to the particular room and to this building. And uh, since the house has been left pretty much intact, uh, it does also have the original china that was used in this room in the closet. It, it's wonderful china because it uh, shows us the uh, famous willow pattern and the, the Chinese legend associated with the willow pattern is that there were two star-crossed lovers who were unable to fulfill their romance and uh, they died but in the next life they were turned into two doves who you can see circling around at the top of the portrait. On January 17, 1944, First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt visited New Brunswick under the auspices of the Hillel Foundation, which had begun at Rutgers in 1943, for the fourth war loan drive bond rally. It was a meeting attended by 1,200 people. A few days later, she mentioned lunching at Woodlawn in her newspaper column, uh, noting as follows, the alumni house of New Jersey College for Women, where we dined, was the home of Mr. James Nelson. He left it to the college completely furnished as a most delightful home-like clubhouse. It could not help but have a lasting influence on the girls. Woodlawn was used by the alumni until 1955-56. In the summer of 1956, the building became home to Wells Phillips Eagleton and Florence Prushine Eagleton Foundation, later the Eagleton Institute of Politics. And if we can get the camera to pan out, perhaps we can see the original candlestick and the original radiator, which are still there to this very day. Elizabeth, one of the little known secrets of Woodlawn is that uh, in, in the dining room, there's a hidden panel uh, behind which I'm told is a safe. Let's take a look. Absolutely, Angus. It's a very old safe. And you'll also notice that on the back of the door to the safe room are measurements of nieces of uh, the Nelsons. Elizabeth, we're here in the front hall of uh, Woodlawn Estate. Can you tell us a little bit about the uh, dual staircase here? Uh, yes, this staircase was installed as part of the design by McKim, Mead, and White. And uh, the, uh, the classical Beaux-Arts experience of going up or more than likely sweeping down a staircase such as this was very popular and grand at the time. When McKim, Mead, and White did the addition to this uh, area, they actually pushed the building out 16 feet. So they virtually doubled the area of the staircase so to accommodate this uh, 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 beautiful massive stair. Thank you. Well, here we are at the carriage house, and uh, by its very name, that implies this is all pre-automobile age. Uh, horse-drawn carriages. Uh, from my uh, glance at it, it seems it's, a, it's three bays. It's bilaterally symmetrical. You have bracketed eaves. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about, th about this building? Well, this building obviously was a carriage house. What's unusual about it is that it does have the three bays and the three arched bays. It likely dates to the 1850s when they were adding on to, uh, to the main house. Um, certainly, if they had three bays, they would have had a lot of carriages as well. Uh, typically, uh, what's really interesting about carriage houses is that the carriages would have been pulled in through the front doors. The horses would have been stabled to the rear and then the, um, the groom and the drivers would live upstairs in part of the upstairs and the hay mow would be upstairs so that they could drop the hay right down into the stalls for the horses. Elizabeth, we're here at the cottage and it's sort of my understanding the, the patrician Nelson provided the cottage for the son. 
and the, and the new bride is a sort of a, a for domestic harmony, they had a separate uh, dwelling place. That's exactly correct. So you can tell us a little bit more about this. Um, yes, James Nelson's second, okay, the Woodlawn Mansion was his family's home. Uh, he lived there with Catherine Bleeker Nelson, and at which time they had their son, James number three. As James grew up in the big mansion and went off and did his studies, he met uh, Mary Putnam Woodbury and married her and came back. And while his mother was living in the main house, he and Mary built the cottage to live on the property near his mother. It wasn't until after the death of um, Catherine Bleeker Nelson that Mary and James, number three, moved yeah. into the main mansion. I guess we were just saying James the third because it makes it sound like a royal. Yeah, it sounds yeah. like <laughs> King James, but uh, yeah. the third James uh, and his wife Mary moved into the main mansion, and of course, then they effected the 1905 um, renovations by McKim, Mead, and White. So the cottage was left standing. Um, it was used by the uh, alumni. And it's been added on to many times. It has been added on to, and it was recently renovated, um, I would say, within the last 12 years. It was renovated before I arrived here mm -hmm. at Rutgers. Um, some of the renovations um, took away some important features. Uh, but for the most part, the block of the house remains the same. And it's still being used by the Douglas alumni? Yes, it is. Yeah. Oh, very interesting. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, Elizabeth, we're, we're here at the gatehouse, which is 183 Riders Lane, right smack dab on Riders Lane. It's at the mouth of the estate, the entrance to the estate. So the name sort of gives the game away, the gatehouse. This was sort of the a gated estate, and I presume this is where the uh, caretaker lived. That would be correct. It was, um, well, the gatehouse was basically a 19th century security system. It was just somebody keeping an eye on who comes in and who comes out of the property. And uh, it's interesting because the gatehouse is located where the main road into the estate was originally located. The main road actually came up George Street from what's now Route 18. It used to be Burnett Street. It did not come in from the Commercial Avenue area of New Brunswick. So it, it seems like the entrance is a little off but it did go straight down to the river from the gatehouse. Um, the gatehouse is probably dating to about 1850, judging from some of the materials similar to the um, carriage house. Uh, very simple design, uh, and it was. It was just simply the caretaker's house. The Nelson estate was enormous. Uh, I would say probably um, maybe 40% of the college farm, the Cook campus, was part of the Nelson property, uh -huh. as well as most of Douglas College was part of the Nelson property. So it was a huge estate. And important enough to have a security system. Absolutely. Yeah.